Hello everyone, and welcome to the very first Pokemon Character Study. In this series of videos, I'm hoping to do a comprehensive analysis and breakdown of some of the characters in the Pokemon world. We all know that Pokemon themselves are the stars of the franchise, but the humans and trainers are just as big a part of it too. In these videos, I'm hoping to break down the story and lore behind specific trainers that appear in the anime, games, and manga. The first character I've chosen to do a video on is none other than Mr. Fuji himself. While pretty much every version of Mr. Fuji across the franchise is shown to be relatively nice and friendly, some of the different versions seem to be sitting on top of some pretty heavy secrets. Before we jump into Mr. Fuji's appearances in the franchise, let's first take a look at his name and the origin behind it. The last name Fuji is definitely not a common one in places other than Japan, so it makes sense that there's probably some kind of deeper meaning and Japanese-related origin to it. Mr. Fuji's name actually comes from a specific type of flower that has a very purple and lavender color to it. If the importance of the color isn't obvious, this could possibly be a connection to how he lives in Lavender Town, which would match up with the color of the Wisteria, aka the Fuji plant. Alrighty, let's jump right into Mr. Fuji's appearances in the franchise now, starting with the games first. Mr. Fuji lives in Lavender Town and takes care of abandoned and orphan Pokemon inside of the Lavender Volunteer Pokemon House. Many of the residents say that he's pretty nice and is a fairly shy and quiet person. An interesting thing to note about Mr. Fuji is that he isn't a native resident to Lavender Town. Instead, he used to live on Cinnabar Island and was known as Dr. Fuji, the founder of the island's Pokemon Lab. He is shown to be a close friend to gym leader Blaine, as there is a picture in the Cinnabar Gym of the two of them, and it's said that Mr. Fuji used to live in the Pokemon Mansion before it was destroyed. In the Generation 1 games and their remakes, when Team Rocket kills the Marowak, Mr. Fuji decides to go to the Team Rocket hideout and rant and berate Team Rocket for what they've done. After he did that, he went to the Pokemon Tower to calm the deceased Marowak's soul, but Team Rocket appeared and held him hostage at the top of the tower. Eventually, the player comes along and rescues him, and out of his gratitude, he gives the player a Poke Flute. In Pokemon Gold, Silver, Crystal, Heart Gold, and Soul Silver, which takes place three years after the original games and the remakes, Mr. Fuji is still living in Lavender Town, although now he has found paying his respects in the House of Memories, which contains all the graves from the Pokemon Tower, which was converted into the Kanto Radio Tower. He doesn't really do much in these games, but you can still talk to him about the House of Memories and what it's used for. An interesting reference to Mr. Fuji comes in the form of a sign on Faraway Island in Pokemon Emerald. For those who don't know about Faraway Island, it's a special event in Pokemon Emerald that lets the player travel to a distant island and catch Mew there. The sign on Faraway Island appears to be faded, but says something similar to, if any human sets foot on this island again, let it be a kind-hearted person. In the English version, it says that the name is smudged and unreadable, but in the Japanese version, the faded character G can be seen at the bottom of the sign suggesting that Mr. Fuji has been to this island before. Like I said towards the beginning of this video, Mr. Fuji actually lived on Cinnabar Island as a researcher before moving to Lavender Town. This fact, coupled with Mr. Fuji possibly having been to Faraway Island, which is where people have encountered Mew at, implies heavily that he had some sort of role in the creation of Mew 2. It's heavily implied in the games that he lived in Pokemon Mansion and wrote the journals chronicling Mew's discovery and the creation of Mewtwo. Unfortunately, we don't get any more information about this part of his life in the games, but we can look to a different version of Mr. Fuji for more information. While the games may not give us any more information about this version of Mr. Fuji, I think that there's another version we can look at to help us learn more about the story behind him. The Pokemon Origins version of Mr. Fuji, while technically a different version of Mr. Fuji, still falls into the same canon and story as the video game Mr. Fuji. Because Pokemon Origins is directly based off of the video game's canon and story, I think we can safely say that anything revealed in Pokemon Origins will be true in the games, and vice versa. The Mr. Fuji in Pokemon Origins is very similar to the one that is portrayed in the games. He is a somewhat quiet but very nice man that lives in Lavender Town and goes to the Pokemon Tower after the Marowak is killed. 
Red comes in and saves the day, and Mr. Fuji rewards him with a Pokey Flute and a Keystone and Mega Stone. While the Mr. Fuji from the games and Pokemon Origins seem almost identical at first, more information about the Origins Mr. Fuji is shared in the final episode of the special. Professor Oak reveals to Red Mr. Fuji's past as Dr. Fuji. Professor Oak explains that the journals that Red found in the Pokemon Mansion belong to Dr. Fuji, and that he used to be a dedicated Pokemon researcher. Professor Oak also says that he was working on artificially creating a powerful new Pokemon as well. Red was still skeptical about Dr. Fuji and Mr. Fuji being the same person, but Professor Oak says that it's very likely, as Dr. Fuji was also researching mysterious stones, such as the one that Mr. Fuji gave to Red. With all of this evidence, and with Pokemon Origins story in canon following the game's story in canon, I think it's safe to say that Mr. Fuji helped create Mewtwo in both the games and the Pokemon Origins anime special. Let's quickly jump to another version of Mr. Fuji that has appeared in the mainline Pokemon anime, more specifically the uncut story of Mewtwo's origin. In the uncut story of Mewtwo's origin, which is a 10 minute short that explains Mewtwo's birth and origin before Pokemon, the first movie, we get to see the mainline anime's interpretation of Mr. Fuji in the form of none other than another Dr. Fuji. This version of Mr. Fuji is slightly similar to the other Mr. Fujis, but also has a few key differences that set him apart from the games and origins versions. One of the big differences is that Dr. Fuji actually has a wife and a daughter named Amber. Unfortunately, his daughter dies while she is young, but Dr. Fuji devotes his life to trying to bring her back and clone her. Because Dr. Fuji won't accept the truth about his daughter's death, his distraught wife leaves him. Eventually, Dr. Fuji's studies and experiments gain the attention of Giovanni, who says that he will fund Fuji's project to clone his daughter if Dr. Fuji also clones a Mew for him. Dr. Fuji agrees, and thus the creation of Mewtwo begins. As is usually the case with cloning, things don't go so well, and the clone Charmander, Bulbasaur, Squirtle, and Amber all die during the cloning process. Mewtwo survives, but as it ages and matures, it eventually comes to destroy the lab it was created in, along with all people inside, including Dr. Fuji. This is the only version of Mr. Fuji who meets a terrible fate and is killed. With three Fujis down, there's really only one other to cover, the Mr. Fuji from the Pokemon Adventure slash Special manga. In a strange twist, however, he's probably the most boring out of all of the Fujis. Red first meets Mr. Fuji in Lavender Town, where he is paying his respects to his deceased Doduo. He meets Red and invites him back to his house, where Mr. Fuji tells him about Pokemon Tower, and all the ghosts inside of it that are preventing him from burying his Pokemon in a proper place. Once Red cleans out the Pokemon Tower and reveals the truth about the ghosts to the townsfolk, Mr. Fuji takes his dead duo to the Pokemon Tower to finally put it to rest. That's really all we know about the Pokemon Adventure slash special version of Mr. Fuji. He doesn't really do much, and he's only had a couple of small cameos in later volumes. It's never revealed or shown if this version of Mr. Fuji has any relation or connection to Mewtwo or Cinnabar Island, but there is a brief cameo that shows a picture of Mr. Fuji and Blaine inside of a picture book. Nothing is ever elaborated on or explained about it. It's possible that there might be a connection between Mr. Fuji, Blaine, and Mewtwo, but because the manga generally has a different story from the games, we can't say for sure if this means anything. Assuming that this manga version of Fuji had nothing to do with Mewtwo, then it would make him, at least in my opinion, the lamest and most boring version of Mr. Fuji throughout the entire franchise. I believe that the only other truly significant appearance of Mr. Fuji that we've gotten is the Mr. Fuji trainer card in the Pokemon trading card game. His card debuted in the Fossil expansion, and it allows the user to choose a card on their bench and shuffle it into their deck. Mr. Fuji has only had this one card and has never been seen since in the trading card game. With that, we've covered hopefully every version of Mr. Fuji that has appeared all across the Pokemon franchise. Each version definitely has their similarities, such as most of the Mr. Fuji's helping make Mewtwo, but each of them also has something that sets them apart from the others, like Dr. Fuji having a wife and kid, or the Mr. Fuji from the manga having a do-duo. 
Regardless of which version you look at, there's no denying that Mr. Fuji definitely has some pretty interesting story and facts behind him. Thanks for watching this Pokemon character study on Mr. Fuji, and I'll catch you later.